What is that posture? I'm retired, my friend. Retired from what? Retired from making any chatbot with LLM and all these ragged stuff. Listen, I'm tired of having these chatbots answering my question differently every single day. Look, I asked, for example, how do you explain the process of photosynthesis? And it says, well, photosynthesis starts with downloading sunlight from cloud and upgrading it to cloud to, to oxygen 2.0. It's daydreaming, man. Yeah, it's hallucinating. Well, listen, you have to evaluate your chatbots or any LLM-based application before you put complete checkmark beside them. For example, there's an open source tool called TrueLens that will let you evaluate your LLM-based chatbots or applications and have a dashboard to showcase the results of your evaluation, so better to get your gaps before you productionize anything. Then, let's go. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, everyone, here it is. We're going to talk about True Lens. Before we talk about what is True Lens, let's see why do we need evaluation for our LLM based applications, namely chatbots that you create for rank or when you chat with your data. For example, you might have seen that you as a human, you ask a question and AI agent answer you based on your documents or based on your knowledge when you do rank. But sometimes the same question getting different answers each time you ask from the chatbot and it will let you feel like, how can I trust this chatbot that each time it behaves potentially differently and I cannot fully rely on it before I put it to the hands of my end users. So that's why we need to potentially evaluate and trend the solution, making sure we are confident on moving forward with any LLM apps. Similar to any machine learning or AI projects that you do, we certainly have evaluation in place through MLOps. So TrueLens, I came up with their open source GitHub repository that technically what they do, it is in this chart here. You, as a human, you start interacting with your chatbot, again, just one type of LLM app. And what TrueLens will do, it will create a local SQL uh, database, SQLite database, but you can have it in different databases. And it will start logging the inputs and outputs of your uh, rack or any LLM applications that you have to create you some scores automatically, some evaluation scores. For example, what's the relevance, uh, coherency, truthfulness, how the answers are grounded based on your data to get the answers and chatbots are not hallucinating. These are scores that will let you know on average how much you can rely on the chatbot and how it is working properly. And then at number four, it will give you a dashboard which is running on the streamlet that you can visualize. For example, what is the score of uh, fluency, coherence or groundlessness? overall for your chatbot based on chain version 1, chain version 2, and you can select the, bane, the best chain version for having the best, let's say, rag chatbot based on the evaluation results, okay? So let me go through the GitHub repo. Before I actually going to the GitHub repo, some more facts about TrueLens. First of all, you can start with just a few lines of code that are going to show you how you can install that. And uh, one more thing, okay, here are a couple of metrics that you can have in place for evaluating your LLM chatbots. And moving down further, here are just a couple of examples of LLM applications you can have in place for evaluating them by TrueLens. And there you go. Let's start with their GitHub repository. I will add the link of the code that I'm going to run to showcase you this TrueLens demo uh, in Discord channel. And the link of Discord channel is under video description below of the video. Click on it, you will go to the Discord channel and there's a section called reference. You click on reference and you will see the link of this GitHub and the code that they're going to run. But technically what you need to do, you just simply need to install TrueLens eval. Uh, I tried that with this, but I got some uh, uh, failures with some errors in the code. So I would suggest you install from GitHub by potentially running this command. So I just ran this over Google Collab, so let me show you how I did it shortly. All at the beginning, as I told you, I installed that from GitHub directly, so I had to restart my kernel as I did, and then, of course, you need to install some other packages like OpenAI because I want to create a rag with chatting with GPT 
I want to create a rack, so I need a vector database. I use Chroma DB, so I have a vector database on disk. But again, you don't need to just have Chroma DB. You might use other vector databases for creating racks, so it doesn't matter really. So scrolling down, obviously you need to have your OpenAI key. So I had it. I ran all the scopes and I removed it before recording this video. And here are just some information examples that I'm gonna chat with them through rack scenario. I have some information about University of Washington. Uh, Seattle and Starbucks is not too relevant, but as just a sample of having Rack Scenario in place. Now I have my text, so I need to create a vector database and add all these uh, information with the embeddings to my vector database. So that's why I'm calling Chroma DB and I'm using OpenAI Auto Model to create embedding out of it and ship those embeddings to my Chroma DB. And obviously, I have multiple. Uh, information on the top these documents so I added them all to my vector store now this is the moment that I'm gonna import true lens eval and I want to create my rack application under true evaluation to make sure true uh, true lens will log and evaluate everything that goes to my LLM app here which is a rack that's why I define a class called rack from scratch and I'm defining instrument. What is instrument? This is the building blocks of TrueLens. So I'm defining three instruments here using TrueLens. One, two, three. The first instrument is retrieving the information from VectorDB. The second instrument will generate the answer by LLM using retrieve information. And then the last one is calling these two sequentially to generate the answer. So it is calling first retrieve, second generate. So I call these two sequentially under a new instrument called query. So what each instrument do, the first one retrieve, obviously we're just querying our vector database and we're saying that retrieve the most for relevant chunks of data for us based on the question. Second one is giving this context that we retrieve from Chroma DB to OpenAI using GPT 3.5 model to get the answers. And the last one is just telling us how we call these two in a sequence to return the answer. Now I have my rack created and I call it RAG or rack with the small letters. Now we want to do some evaluations on this rack before we use that too, right? So this is the time that we import some evaluation metrics from something called feedback imported from TrueLens eval. So the first one is I'm going to the feedback object to call something called groundedness this is one metric by itself I do the same thing for calling another metric from true lens which is called relevancy the third metric that I'm gonna call is context relevancy so what are these three the first one is defining that how much the chunks that you have retrieved as, and the answer is really based on your data and not hallucination second one is telling is how much in general the question that you ask is relevant to the answer the third one gonna check the context that you retrieve before you answer the question, the context we retrieved, how much it is relevant to the question that has been asked by the user. And we can aggregate the overall metrics by the aggregation method we like. For example, here I want to calculate the mean of the context relevancy score of multiple questions that I'm going to ask, for example. So I defined, I ran it, it was pretty short, we're just defining the metrics here. And then moving further, here I'm now calling that small letters rack which is the application we create on the top we give it an id name and we're telling that hey we're gonna also evaluate these metrics as my feedback that we define on the top for this rack application under this id done now if i ask a question i could the rack that query what was the university of Was uh, when was the university of washington founded true lens gonna start working not only it generate the answer but also it captured those three metrics we define on the top and then told me that okay here are the results even total cost and I call it and I have it under rack v1 because that's the name I define for my application if I want to see all the records for example I can even go back to the historical records that is capturing I ran it and there you go I have the question answered as I told you gonna log everything plus the metrics that we calculated Something cool that I found in true eval is that not only it will start evaluation, but you can use these evaluation scores as a filter or as a guardrail. Let me tell you what I mean. For example, when you ask your chatbot a question about something, you can say to this rank that if the metric called X, or let's say relevance metric or groundedness metric, is below certain score, do not answer the user question. 
or just filter contexts that are coming from a vector database that they have a good relevancy score to the question. That's how, before you even give it a try and pay money to, to answer user question, you can filter your chatbot performance live with using these metrics as a godly. That's why here we are defining another rack again, but this time we call it filtered rack because I want to use this context relevance filter that we defined as a filter to filter the answers before we showcase to the user. So the only change that we're adding here is in the instrument that you're defining for retrieving, we are also adding something called add context filter using this relevant score and this is the threshold. So below this, don't show the answer. The, say, the rest is the same. We are giving the chunks to the open air model and then calling retrieval and generated completion to showcase the answer. But now we have a filter drag defined. Let's do the same thing again. Again, we're going to evaluate with these three metrics, but this time for this new filtered rag, and we call it rag v2. And then we ask the same question again, but this time, as we can see, rag v2, we got better results from relevancy because we filtered and say that just get the answers with that relevancy score. One versus zero point. And you can see it's below that, uh, above that threshold. And the same thing, we can also go back historically, check out what we have logged by true uh, evals. Lastly, I told you that true evals has a dashboard. So when I ran this, it ran the dashboard over a Streamlit app and gave me this IP address. So when you click on it, you should enter this IP address and then this is what you will see. This is an Streamlit app that has my RAG V1 and RAG V2. RAG V2 is the filtered one that I showed you. It has the latency, total cost, total tokens, and all these metrics that we define on the top that it beautifully visualized them by some icons here. And if you select any of them like this app, it will also start showing you what it has captured as user input, response, the time, and again, the metrics with some other information. If I click on feedback function, it will showcase your chart of, for example, on, on, on what's the frequency of having groundedness score between eight, 0 0.8 to 1. Because I just use this rack once, we just have one record, but if you have multiple applications, you will see that this chart is becoming an actual chart. Or going back to my dashboard again, let's check rag v1. The same thing. I have some information about what we have asked and what has been logged and the frequency of metrics uh, printed out for me. So the good news about TrueLens is that, first of all, you can run it locally. So you have full control on what is getting logged, what database has been used. You can even modify potential of this stream lab to make it better. You don't need to start from scratch to having an end-to-end -end dashboard for evaluating your chatbot stuff if you want to. So take a look at TrueLens. I found it pretty helpful for accelerating you on evaluation, at least understanding the concept of evaluation by your LLM applications. And in case you're running your solution on enterprise ecosystems like Azure, I would certainly comment you to check out Azure um, PromptFlow, which is a service added to Azure ML and Azure AI Studio. And PromptFlow has a section called Evaluation very similar to this dashboard that we are showing, but there you can have a more sophisticated evaluation approaches. You can do bulk tests and in enterprise scale and then deploy your applications. All right, that was all about this video. I hope you found it helpful. If yes, I would be very thankful if you liked this video and always I welcome your comments uh, on video comment section below. The community will enjoy your inputs. Thank you. Remember, your inner strength shines brightest in moments of kindness and compassion. Dream big, my friends. Believe in yourself and take action. Till next video, take good care.